one here is how I made this old fashioned baby tea yoke gown. I have a separate video that goes over the embroidery work that is linked down below. So let's go over the pattern pieces first and I am going to switch over here since I did this in real time so I wouldn't forget any of those details. I wanted to go over how I, how I position these pattern pieces for this old fashioned baby gown. Um, it's a little unconventional and it saves you about half um, in fabric so by all means if you want to follow the directions and get twice as much fabric and all that sort of stuff and go 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 for it um, like I say it's sewing you, you do you but if you're okay with being a little bit of a rule breaker and um, saving half in fabric then this is what I did so um, on the right side of the fabric what I did is I I traced every single pattern piece and you're kind of going to have to do this anyways especially if you want to do the embroidery if you're skipping the embroidery stuff then you don't have to trace it but um, I like to do all my embroidery work ahead of time and you've got to trace the embroidery whether you do it ahead of time or not so here is um, here is the center piece you can see here's the yoke up here and then here's that um, that long section here's where that lace is going to be mitered and come down um, so what I did and this started it right so here I've got that pattern piece and you can see it goes from one um, one top to the other top this is a half a yard of fabric the pattern calls for I believe a yard if not a little bit more I think the Kristen gown is actually two yards if I'm not mistaken but it at least calls for double this if not more um, this is half a yard of fabric 18 inches and what I did is I just I used that as my limiting factor factor so I went all the way up to the top I made sure it was on grain and I went all the way to the bottom is where this is going to end and that set the length for all of them because I want this to be as long as I can get it without you know they're in there cleaning up their playroom any rate so that that gives me the my length um, I traced the embroidery work exactly how it is up here um, for this one so you can see this is lined up right here to my embroidery then this guy I actually moved this up okay just until I liked the proportions you know this one kind of ends here I thought there should be a little bit of a gap it would have this thing would have been down here but I thought that was too too much of a gap since my dress ends here you know what I mean like I'm not doing the full-on christening down length so I just moved this guy up a little bit and then um, for this guy I skipped over this mo this little motif in the middle so you've got this the top one then you've got this next little motif which I used the second one I skipped over and I liked the third one for the bottom so I just positioned it on the bottom I lined up you know where the bottom of the christening gown would be and I just used that I centered it um, centered it and copied that there so then that's the front of it then you've got your two side pieces which are these little guys right so this is the guy with like a little smidgen of an armhole area right here so the first one I flipped over just to try to make some you know be cautious of my spacing again lined her up on the grain the outside line as well as the lace now for these old-fashioned date uh, old-fashioned baby patterns I'm not thrilled with the huge lines that were used. The lines are like an eighth inch of a eighth of an inch. So you have to set it in your mind, at least if you really want some clean seams and have everything line up, you've got to like pick the outside of that line and be consistent with that or pick the inside because if you've got an eighth of an inch and an eighth of an inch, then that could be, you know, a quarter of an inch you could be off by and um, so just be mindful of that. So then let me flip this back over. Um, you can see, I know Daisy, she's trying to drift off to sleep. Um, so you can see I traced this thing here, which is she's calling the, the dotted, first dotted line, which is the lace placement for the day gown because I want to put some lace right there. Then I copied these two little embroidery motifs. And I also copy here where she says to cut for the day dresses because I want to put some lace there. Like I say, it's so you to you, there's no, you know, no one's going to come and tell me I can't do that. So then I, I measured up. And so what I did to get the length here is you can see that from this little miter section down is about 15 inches on mine. So I just did that and I traced 
15 and a half inches. It's, yeah, 15 and a half inches. So I went to the same minor thing and I just put a little, a little tick mark here and that's about a half an inch below, yeah, half an inch below. And so I aligned it again a half an inch below on this side of the curve too. And I used this curve, which she's calling the second, it's the second, you know, lace placing um, line. And that is what I used for the bottom. Does that make sense? So I lined that up and I used that for the bottom there. Um, I lined it up here and I traced it. So um, I also put, she's got these three little motifs here and I just lined that up again putting the bottom, she's calling this the lace placement line for the christening gown um, and to cut for the gown. And I lined it up for my bottom hem and I have my three little motifs here uh, that I liked. And I did the same thing, just flipping her over. Make sure to flip it over. You want one for the left, one for the right, both on the right side of your fabric. Um, so I flipped it over and I repeated the same thing for the other side of that front. And then when it came to the back, once again, oops. so when it came to that back, what I did is I laid it out like this so it would, you know, it would make the best use of my fabric here. Made sure it was on the grain. And I am going to ignore this little fold section. I think this is going to be a facing. She's got buttonholes here, so I imagine this would be a facing sort of thing. Instead, I'm not doing that route. I'm just going to do a, a long placket in here, and I'm going to flip my pattern piece along this line, this fold line. So I've got my pattern piece this way, centered on the grain. Um, I Again, I trace this lace placement for the day dress line because I'm going to put some lace there. I also trace the cut here for day dress line because I'm going to put some lace there. And I've copied these two little motifs here. Then I move it up because I'm just, I'm ending at that 15 and a half inches all the way at the bottom. Uh oh, we've spit up, hold on. Alright, so, um, so yeah, I've ended it using the, um, the uh, curve that says lace placement line for christening gown. I just traced that curve to do that. And I did the two motifs here, but I actually added a third one. Okay, so I've got one, two, three motifs, and I just sort of spaced them out as I've eyeballed them so it looks kind of equal. And then I flip her over, yeah! And I take this fold line, and that's gonna be my center back, so I line that up there. I trace everything, and I do the same thing with the lace, the lace placement. For these two lines, I do my two motifs, I move her up and do the two motifs here, but I actually add two more. So you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven motifs all along. I've got one in the center front and then three on either sides. And I've got two and two, although I might put, yeah, I should probably put two more right here. Um, and then I'll have a pocket here and I won't have a seam right here, which I really like. So. I need to get her down for a nap, but that um, that is how I did this. And oh, the one last thing is that when you do it this way, you will not have enough fabric for the long sleeve. So you can either do like a lace sleeve, you can do it out of another uh, another fabric. You can skip the sleeve. What I'm going to do is I have just enough fabric. Okay. Shh, 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 shh. I really have to get going. I have just enough fabric to line this up and have a sleeve out of there. I know it may not look like it on the video, but I do. I guess to go, that's how I did my, um, that's how I did my thing, and now um, I'm going to embroider it, and I will see you for the construction. All right, so once I had my pattern pieces cut out and all my embroidery work complete, then I started the construction. And just FYI, I do have another video that goes over this delicious and really easy embroidery stitches. I think I might have mentioned that already. Uh, pass me the coffee. So I take the center front, and I'm going to be joining it with the side fronts of the dress. There is going to be lace joining the two together and to turn that corner the lace needs to be mitered or at least it looks very nice when it's mitered and it's really sloppy when it's not so and you could do this miter as you go but you will have a little bit of fabric caught in that miter and it's just not as easy in my opinion so instead I like to make the miter first to do this I'm eyeballing a length out of lace kind of giving them about an extra inch or so on each of those ends and then I pinch where the miter should go you don't have to be precise here 
you know, because you do have those extra inches on each of the ends. Then I took that to my ironing board and folded the lace onto itself so it creates a miter. Basically, you'll fold the lace onto itself at the point that you pinched and then you'll bring the long side of the lace down so it's 90 degrees from the other side of the lace, you know, making a miter. And then I give that all an ironing to sort of lock it in place, so to speak. And you can see how the lace folds together and then again it folds down about 90 degrees from itself. I hope that's all making sense. So then I use this Madeira 80 weight thread for all the lace work on this gown. I'm also using a Microtech, Microtex <laughs> 70 needle for all the lace work as well and I grab some stitch in the ditch stabilizer. It is linked down below but honestly if you don't plan on doing much lace work after this I would just grab a piece of tissue paper or even a receipt from your purse. So I stitch across the miter with some straight stitches and then I gently tear away the stabilizer. Sorry, I kind of got off frame there, but here is the miter in progress. From there, I carefully cut that little triangle off about eighth of an inch away from those stitches. Be careful not to trim the top corner of that header. You want to leave it there so the lines you know, are fluid down that gown. Then I put the stabilizer back under the lace and go over those edges with a tiny zigzag and voila, the perfect little miter. <laughs> From there, I give it an ironing and then I pin the miter to the corner on the lace line given by the pattern. I pin the rest of the lace in place around that miter and then I sew the lace to the gown with a straight stitch, again using an 80 weight Madeira thread. I'm stitching into that header and when I get to the corner, I put my needle down, turn my work and continue on. After that, I give it the lace and ironing and then I turn the gown so I can fold the excess fabric back and trim very closely to that seam. Of course, you want to be careful not to cut through your lace here. I'm trimming about eighth of an inch away from those stitches and you want to handle your work very carefully and just not a ton at this point. If you don't have to touch it, don't touch it. Just carefully trim and take it to your machine to do a zigzag over top of that seam and that'll tidy everything up and lock it all in place and keep your fabric from frying. So now I'm going to join that side front of the center front piece. Before I can join the pieces, I'm going to put two rows of lace insertion. You can totally skip this step, but come on, look how pretty it is. <laughs> so I line up the lace onto their lines and and then I do a straight stitch on top of the, you know, each of those headers and then I cut down the middle of the fabric. I mean, you could just call it a day without removing the fabric behind the lace, but really the lace just sparkles at you when the fabric is gone. So then I iron each side over and I trim up those pieces again to about an eighth of an inch and then again I zigzag over top of that. But there is another method you could try to each their own and that is to zigzag before you trim up the fabric. There are pros and cons to each route so try them both and see what each one you like better. I find that it works best to kind of pull up on the fabric so you can trim right up to that seam and I'm trying to get a good angle, camera angle here to show that and it's rather difficult to do the work with my camera in the way but I hope you get my drift. <laughs> so once that lace insertion is on the gown, I join the front side to the center front piece. To do this, I first gather the top of side piece with two rows of gather stitches. The idea of two rows of stitches is that one will be on either side of where the permanent stitches are going to go, just making a very, you know, neat process of those gathers. Then I adjust the gathers to fit the lace and then I pin it all in place. I take it to my machine and I run some straight stitches across the top and again put your needle down when you turn that corner and continue sewing down the lace header. From there I give it an ironing and I trim up that seam. Once again I zigzag a little bit on top of that fabric so the raw edges are enclosed. And I'm sort of cutting as I go with this little number. You definitely don't have have to do the same but it's kind of fun it reminds me how they work in like a tour land or, or if you will <laughs> regardless you will have to wait until later to cut out that armhole since the lace is mixed into the arm cycle so just curve around and you'll have an armhole like so then I took that little bit of remaining fabric that I mentioned when I was discussing the pattern layout and I cut the sleeves out of this I'm just going as long as the fabric allows and then I'm attaching this lace to the bottom edge of the sleeve 
sleeve. Of course, there are many different options here, so feel free to take this and run with it. And I have a separate video on how to join fabric to lace that I will link down below. Then I press that little seam towards the sleeve's fabric and join the sleeve together using French seams. And I have a detailed video on how to do French seams that is linked down below as well. <laughs> For now, I'm setting those sleeves aside and continue to join the rest of the dress together. So I cut down the back of the yoke area and then I fold the back in half giving it an ironing. I'm cutting down that iron crease to put in a placket. You can do the continuous placket method uh, or you can do the folded one and I have videos going over both that are linked down below to each their own. And then I pick one side and sew that together using a French seam. I'm only doing one side since I'm going to be doing a lace hem and the other side will allow me to hide those raw edges of the lace and you'll see what I mean in a little bit if that's confusing to you. I also join both shoulder seams using French seams. Next I take the lace edging and I join that to the neckline's raw edge. I'm leaving about an inch or so on each end of that placket and that extra bit will be used to enclose the raw edges of the lace and you'll see what I mean when I sew it up at the end of this video. Alternatively, you could take a bias band of fabric and use that to enclose the neckline's raw edge instead. So next, and pardon the bad lighting, this was in the middle of the night, I trimmed up the little phrase on that hemline. I'm preparing that hem to accept some lace. I attached two rows of lace and of course it's sewing so you do you and I have another video explaining how to join lace together that is linked down below. Once the hem is done, then I sewed up the other side seam again using a French seam and this is how the raw edges of the lace are enclosed. Isn't that just lovely? <laughs> Finally, I take two rows of gather stitches at the top of the sleeve and gather up those puppies. I am going to join these to the gown using a French seam and Dress Them Dearly has a great permanent story on her Instagram showing how to do that so head over there and show her some love but regardless on how you install your sleeve be mindful that the back of the sleeve is at the back of the dress and the front of the sleeve is at the front of the dress. This sleeve is not symmetric there is a front and a back to her and after you're done sewing in those sleeves then I enclose the raw edges of the lace at the neckline. I simply fold it over twice and hand sewed that into place easy as pie and I think this is a gorgeous dress for any infant and you could definitely skip the embroidery work and it would still just sparkle at you. You could use lace tape instead of French lace if that's not in your budget. But I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.